good. Well, this morning on The Dish, a visit to the Big Easy, along with Jazz, the French Quarter, and Mardi Gras. Amazing food has always been a hallmark of the city of New Orleans. It's found both in local cafes and in famed restaurants known the world over. And at one of the most renowned, Commander's Palace, there's someone new in charge of the kitchen. Meg Bickford is the first woman executive chef in the restaurant's long history, carrying on a tradition while making a mark of her own. Jamie Wax has her story. Commanders was tasteful beige like every other house in the Garden District. And I came one day and there was a big patch of aqua blue and I was like, oh my God. I the distinctive blue and white edifice of Commander's Palace in the Garden District of New Orleans is a symbol of culinary excellence to food lovers everywhere. I bicycled home as fast as I could and told my mom, I said, there's no way you can paint that restaurant blue. That's so embarrassing. I'll never be able to go to school again. And it's blue. So she didn't listen. <laughs> Clearly. <she laughs> In typical Ella fashion, she just went, no. The Ella she refers to is legendary Ella Brennan, whose family bought the restaurant in 1969. It's earned a reputation as one of the best fine dining restaurants in the world. That reputation was maintained and expanded by Ella's daughter, T. Martin, and niece, Lally Brennan, the current proprietors. You all seem to have a special eye for talent. Is there a secret to that that you've started to see? Is there a pattern? You know, sometimes people say, where do you get them? And I'm like, do we get them or does this place make them? Mm. And so I think there's a little bit of both. The list of former head chefs is like a who's who of food world titans including icons like Paul Prudhomme, Emeril Lagasse, and Tori McPhail. How much puree do you use? And now, for the very first time, the hallowed kitchen of Commander's Palace is being commanded by a woman, newly appointed executive chef Meg Bickford. What does it feel like to be in the line of that? Can you even think about that as you're trying to tackle this job? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I'm very fortunate to be asked and invited and put on that list. Those guys really built their careers here and they became who they were as professional chefs here. So I'm very excited about that, that one day being on this list and being like, that's right, and that's Meg Bickford. In a way, this is a huge moment because of the fact that you're a woman, but in a way, you, you sort of wish it, it weren't. Is that fair to say? I think that's fair. I think that it's very important for us to feel empowered, and any movement in the right direction is fantastic. Bickford has worked at the restaurant since 2008, with Tori McPhail as her mentor. He took me as a kid straight out of culinary school and just constantly pushed, constantly pushed. Every time I would think about the future of my career, every time that thought would pop into my head, the next great adventure was one step away, and it was right here. See, you're looking for multiple things. Like, they've got to have this talent. You know, we sometimes call it magic in the hands and this fire in the belly. But, you know, a lot of people are avoiding change. You've got to have somebody that's not only not avoiding it, they're looking for it. And it's so nice when you have depth to move someone up that has been working with us for a while. Bickford has been encouraged to make the menu her own. You say you don't, you don't feel pressure to keep anything on the menu. Is that fair to say? Like Absolutely. We feel very free that we can do whatever we want. I mean, when you really think about it, I would say there might be three things on the menu that won't leave anytime soon, but that doesn't mean they won't change either. We saw examples of that change displayed on our table. And I have seen variations of this oyster and absinthe soup on the menu. Yep. So this is your take on an Ella Brennan classic. It is. And I will say that it is one of the very first things that I learned how to cook in this restaurant. Mm. Just delicious. Was it fun for you to reinvent this or figure out what oh, you wanted absolutely. to do with it? And I think that's something that we do a lot. I think about the influences of Israeli cuisine, Vietnamese and other Asian cuisines in Absolutely. the last, just the ten, last 10 years really. Is your kitchen inspired by those shifts in, in this sort of cultural gumbo? Absolutely. Bickford says her love of cooking has some very deep roots. I'm a Cajun girl. <laughs> you know, my dad's from New Orleans, my mom's from down the bayou, and everybody in my family cooks. It's just a rite of passage at a certain age. I think to me, the reason that I got into this was seeing how powerful food was and what it did for people and to people. And I thought that I wanted to be a part of creating that for other people. 
and in a field that still heavily features men as executive chefs, the next generation is always on her mind. The fact that you have a daughter and that she's watching her mother excel in the way that a son or daughter would often have watched their father excel. Mm -hmm. Do you think about that? Sure, I do. And I think that that is a lot of my motivation. I don't work for me, I don't work for them, I work for her, you know? I think that's very powerful. You got your potatoes? For Meg Bickford, setting a great example goes beyond family. I think to get us through this pandemic is going to take a lot of perseverance and patience and kindness to each other. It's the culture of this city that is feeling this, and we can't afford to lose our culture, and I don't think anybody in this city is going to allow that to happen. T. Martin and Lally Brennan say that culture will outlast us all. You know, I think every restaurant in the world is its own little microcosm of the world. And Commander's is an interesting place in the world. And it will survive all of us. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Jamie Wax, New Orleans. And folks who love it are saying, don't change too much, especially keep that creme brulee and that bread pudding on the menu. But I just have to say, women have always been at the forefront of that restaurant, beginning with Ella Brennan really going out and finding that spot, finding the money to get the loan. I mean, she was a stalwart presence. She was it. And then brought her brothers and sisters on board. And this next generation of women, Lally and T, are just carrying on that tradition. Daughters see their mothers. Yes, daughters they do. Daughters want to emulate that.